This subject for a daily drawing exercise is the Australian kookaburra, famous for its laugh. If you haven't heard it, it's worth a Google to hear it. But they're also one of two varieties of the kingfisher family found in Australia. They sit very happily at the top of the food chain in Australia. They are famous for, in their natural habitat, swooping down and picking up small snakes and then whacking them against tree branches to kill them and then to eat them. But in the same way, they're also famous for swooping down at family barbecues and literally snatching sausages out of people's hands and out of barbecue tongs and carrying the sausages up to likewise bang them against the tree branches before they eat them. So with this drawing, start with the beak and move back. And again, I, I tried to capture something of the sparkle in their eye. They, they do have a very, very congenial look to them. They're a very friendly looking bird when we see them. And now I'm trying to work out the proportions of the head by using the, the, the patterns in the feathers to use these two bands of color, of darker color, and then have those as my reference point then to get the shape of the head around. And I do a bit later decide it's not quite far enough to the right once I've got some more proportions drawn in place further down and I just push it a couple of mils further to the right. But for now, this is where it is. And I'm, I'm being fairly light and fairly tentative. I haven't really decided in what way I'm going to render the bird. Unusually, I have chosen a 0 0.1 millimeter pen for this instead of the normal 0 0.3. I had used this quite successfully in an architectural drawing, this 0.1 millimeter pen uh, yesterday. And so I thought it would be interesting to see how it went with a totally different subject. I do think if I were drawing this again, I would for this subject, go back to the 0 0.3. I feel like it in the end was just a lighter effect than I think I would choose to do deliberately. Or maybe I would use a 0 0.2 instead before that. So I'm working across the, the broadness of the back, the, the, the shoulders, if you like, of the bird. Uh, again, with the proportions, trying to get the proportions correct. I'm I'm not particularly trying to draw it the same size and I'm drawing it slightly larger than my reference. So again, I haven't really got a plan in my head yet for exactly how I'm going to render the feathers, but I'm thinking at this point, I'll use hatching primarily for local color on this rather than to represent a tone or form. Uh, shade or shadow or form, I, I should say. But to get the pattern in, particularly on these tail feathers, this, this very distinctive banding, almost, almost like a tiger's stripes, which is quite appropriate for one of the hunters of the Australian landscape. And then just get this nicely forked branch that the kookaburra is sitting on. Its, its legs are really closer to the body than is the case for many birds in Australia. And he does look a very happy, pleasant, content looking fellow, doesn't he? Of course, it could be a female for all I know. I don't think there's a difference in the feather patterning between the males and females, unlike for, for many Australian birds. So I'm, I'm trying to get just the general effect. This of the, the pattern in, in the feathers, and not just of the patterns of individual feathers, but the way the feathers are organized and the way they lay down the, the lengths of the, the wings. This drawing took me um, about 12 minutes, um, although there are a, a couple of lengthy gaps in that. So it's probably more about really 10 and a half minutes of actual drawing time to do in real time. So it's probably a subject that can just make it into a daily
five or ten minute exercise or simply a lovely subject for a longer drawing if you particularly like drawing birds. I think we have so many uh, beautiful birds around us here in Australia that I think they're probably a more regular subject in my photos than many other things. So at this point now I'm trying to commit to the, the feathers and I decide to start with these tail feathers that have the the most definite pattern to create. So it's not just this banding but it is the fact that these these lower tail feathers are darker as well the entire feather is. So I work at those and I'm really just feeling my way but I, I did realize as I started these that the bands are not the same it's not the same type of stripe going across all the way down the the actual pattern does change often quite significantly from band to band and I think these are the details that if we can spot them just help to give an air of of realism to our drawing without us even being aware of why so I, I do a bit of very brisk hatching vertical hatching to add in effect some color to that and now I'm just working at applying some hatching for the color on the feathers so probably I could have sped this up with the feathers a little bit more and if you if you draw at all with color either with watercolor or with pastels this is a lovely subject for that The, the kookaburra laugh we hear most predictably at dawn. It seems to be a way that, that kookaburras call out to each other first thing in the morning as they awake. And I often awake to the sound of the kookaburra laugh in our local area. As the various birds that make up a flock relocate each other after wherever they've spent the night, I imagine. So now just a bit more work on these feathers and, and trying to work out just how exactly, how much I'm going to do. Sometimes I find it works best for me to start hatching and just to keep going until I feel like I've reached a, a place where I can stop. And sometimes that means I end up doing a lot more hatching than I originally uh, am thinking I will need to do. I decide that the drawing needs more work, more um, more values, darker values than perhaps I originally anticipated. But I'm not going to do that with this one simply because of its use as a, a quick drawing exercise. And then this is also a time now where we're starting to see the overall form of our subject more clearly with some of these tonal areas defined and so we get a better sense of am I happy with the proportions if I'm not are there some lines I can change and it really is interesting when I do the voiceover and I'm just watching myself draw this through the camera and so it's much smaller I often get a better sense of where things aren't quite right so I'm just looking at that line that diagonal line on the lower left of the bird's body thinking, yes, that really could, should be just tucked in a little bit more. As it, as it comes downwards, it should just get closer to, to the wings as it moves down towards the feet. And the wings should actually slope at a slightly greater angle in the same way. So I haven't actually quite got that, the, the um, streamlining of the, the bottom half of the bird. So the bird's looking a bit chunky in the, the lower half. So again, it's, it's really good after we've done this to work out what haven't we quite got right because the next time we do a similar subject, it gives us a chance to just see it a little more accurately. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, I hope you enjoy drawing this Australian icon and you'll get the photo on my channel community page, of course, if you want. But look, whatever you're drawing, however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.